Hello everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel and today we're back with the next Fear the Walking Dead Season 7 review, episode 10 today, episode 11 also will drop today, so stay tuned for that. Check out episode 9 of season 7 from last week if you're yet to do so. Hit that subscribe button again if you're yet to do so. Leave a like if you enjoy the video and if you're enjoying Fear the Walking Dead, let me know down below and yeah are you enjoying the direction of the show you know charlie's episode this week is it hitting the needs of what you're wanting if so check it out keep enjoying it and of course spoilers ahead enjoy so my biggest pet peeve with fear the walking dead at the moment is is that they're um they're doing character episodes like, I get it because they're basically building towards the war against Strand. Like, episode nine was Alicia. Yeah, episode 10 is Charlie. And, you know, not really spoilers because it doesn't really affect anything. But episode 11 ends up being a Daniel, Luciano, Wes, Dwight, Morgan, you know, Sherry. I mean, they barely appear. So they're probably going to appear in the next episode. I can't remember which one next time showed. But anyway. This episode was good, but because I have not seen Fiddle Walking in so long, I forgot how many characters were with Strand. Like, um, you are June, you are John Dory Sr., um, the woman with the baby, uh, the guy in the wheelchair, and then obviously um, Charlie came there to put this plan in motion that Morgan had planned and this episode became something of a romance episode charlie had never bowled or you know kissed a guy and then ultimately she fell for this 15 year old lad who was attempting to become one of the main arsenal members um in their militia and you know i don't know just not everything was obvious like you know they were on this journey thingy that that guy's men found them and ultimately they were punished and killed through their stupidity. Charlie ultimately is now dying of radiation poisoning, a sense of foolishness on her part. She lost her mask and it has affected her neck, her arm and her chest. And her, so I think, no, sorry, her chest, her arm and her face. Uh, and she is ultimately going to die because there is no cure for um, radiation poisoning. You know, when I look at this episode, it didn't really do much. You know, you, they were trying to give us a sense of Charlie's becoming a sort of an independent and a character we can enjoy. She's a good character. There's no dispute in that. But then it's conflicting because, like, June went against Strand's right hand man, the guy with the glasses. Um, you know, um, there was just. And then him getting killed, the young lad, <laughs> it was such a stupid scene. He went on the rooftop, he came across the guy, the scientist guy, that, that, when he went attempted to go and turn the beacon off. And he ran away, thinking that there wasn't going to be backup or they, they wouldn't have known what he was doing. Ultimately, he fails in a one-on-one -on -one fight, he's chucked off the roof, and I just thought it was done so poorly. But I sort of predicted his death i thought he was going to die after he saved charlie from the um, elevator that he sort of caused but um they're both two-faced they're both liars they're both fighting for different causes for strand if it's morgan if it's alicia um and ultimately i just don't think this episode hit the ground hard enough with the impending death of you know charlie now he's dead June continuously rebelling and believing that she's above everyone but Strand because she's the only uh, medic they have. Um, John Dory trying to play this side of Strand against June, it, it, thinking they're not going to be that. I think everyone in this universe thinks each other are idiots. <clears throat> and they're trying to manipulate each other. So, yeah. But obviously, Charlie got a nice strike out of things. She got her first kiss. But now she's going to, you know, die before the age of four. <laughs> she's going to die at the age of 13 because she's just stupid. Um, Fear the Walking Dead is just on a different planet compared to Walking Dead. You wouldn't even think they were in the same universe. <clears throat> and it's, 
that's that's one reason why I stayed away from it for so long because it's just so I don't even feel like if these characters crossed over with The Walking Dead, it'd be weird because they just live two different lives. These people are walking around avoiding radiation, whereas the Rick's group are eating ice cream and uh, living in accommodations. It's so weird because I know the timelines are still a bit all over the place, but even when things sort of get back to normal, they seem so different. I mean... When Morgan first went over to Fear, they were so similar. Um, but now that you know the whole Western stuff they brought in, like season five, season six, and now this tower thing, it's. I hope Strand gets killed. You know, I believe there was a period where he could be redeemed, and people would get along with him, and people would be able to work in yeah, as one. But it just doesn't seem like that, and I think Strand being killed off will be the thing that everyone needs to come together well we'll have to wait and see um so stay tuned for the next episode hope you are enjoying the series i'm obviously here just to make sense of the world that these characters live in where alicia goes where morgan goes you know dwight is um as i said he appears in the next episode but that's three episodes into the series and he only appears for like two minutes they're under underutilizing certain episodes, certain characters, and it's just a weird thing. Like Dwight doesn't fit in this universe either. Sherry, she barely appeared in The Walking Dead, but you know, she doesn't really fit either. <clears throat> so let's see what happens in the final six episodes. Stay tuned for my episode 11 review dropping today as well. Stay tuned for the rest of the content and subscribe, like. I'll see you next one. Goodbye. <laughs>